It may be the Cavs' number one draft pick getting the highlights in Vegas, but under basket, double zero is in the middle of his own highlight. I always wanted to come here. Uh, it was one of my biggest dreams and one of my goals. But playing in the NBA was the furthest thing from Darnell Jackson's mind just a year and a half ago. He quit school and basketball. To help. My mom needed me and I needed to be there. I remember when I went home and the only thing that was in the kitchen was noodles. The icebox was empty and it just crushed me. You see, the Jackson family has seen its fair share of heartache. It started when Darnell's estranged father was shot and killed by Oklahoma City police. Months later, Darnell was arrested for throwing rocks through windows. I got in trouble when I was younger and I had to do community service at the Boys and Girls Club. Although he'd never played basketball, at 14 he was well above six feet and someone there took notice. Every day that I went in, Corey Colbert, my mentor, used to make me play every day. It paid off. Darnell made varsity his freshman year, but when he got to Kansas, the highlights faded. And in 2005, his world collided with that of a drunk driver. High off of cocaine, marijuana, and he was, uh, and he was drunk. Darnell's mother and grandmother were driving back from Las Vegas when a car driven by Christopher Robinson hit them head on. In the hospital, she told me that. She didn't want to drive back. She told my grandma, she was like, let's go to the casino and win some money so we can park the car and we can both fly back. And my mom told me, like, they both flew back. She flew back with broken bones. My grandma flew back in a box. His grandmother, who helped raise him, died. The 18-year-old driver sent to prison. He called me one day uh, before practice. Uh, he just wanted to call and apologize, but uh, I didn't answer the phone. Darnell's mother, Sean, was permanently disabled in the crash, unable to work and provide for Darnell's younger brother and sister. And that brings us back to the night he left school in 2007. I don't want to see my family in the street. If I was the one that had to get that job, I would have got that job. But Kansas coach Bill Self helped convince Darnell the best way to help was to get a degree. So, I just want to know that when I leave here, I'll be out of place. And your heart will hold because you've done that a lot. He returned to school and was still there a year later to give this speech on senior night. In fact, he came back that next season better than ever. Every shot a point for his future, every free throw from his heart to his grandmother. Listen to this reception right here. Darnell Jackson. Darnell graduated in May, drafted in June, but he keeps the photos from his past in his phone. Motivation and he's encouraging other young people to find theirs. You have to be smart about what you're doing and, and, and just make sure you have the right people in your circle. As a second round pick, Darnell's future in the NBA isn't guaranteed. He may never get the highlight, but in the game of life, it's clear this young man is already an MVP. Joy Benedict, News Channel 5. What size should you wear? 22. It's no secret he's a big man. But Shaquille O'Neal also has a big heart. For 15 years, this NBA superstar has gone holiday shopping for an enormous number of children. 14 million kids will wake up this Christmas and not have a toy. But not even Shaq can stuff their stockings on his own, which is why he teamed up with Toys R Us to promote Toys for Tots. I think toys for young children will bring inspiration. So what toys inspired this superstar? My uh, Autographed Dr. J basketball was a big one. My dad came to me one day and said, son, you got to take care of the sisters first. They want the Barbies. I can't really get you what you want. And he gave me the one toy that inspired me to be who I am today. So sports toys were certainly on this Santa's shopping list for other boys and girls. A Nerf basketball. Oh, I love these. And as we made our way around the store, Shaq mentioned a 70s favorite. And then they had one that was called Stretch Armstrong. I took it and I stretched it and psh, the, the gel and the goop came out all this stuff. I was like, geez. He tried to return it, but like many kids 30 years ago, he was stuck with a broken Armstrong. Tell me this, what do you think is a toy that all kids should have? iPod. That is not a toy. That's that an electronic toy. device. A toy. I let that one go on one condition. Can we go to the Barbie aisle? No. I'm by bar All right, let's go to Barbie aisle. Let's go to Barbie aisle. Don't let him fool you. Look at this sexy guy. <laughs> sexy man. Shaq's been down the pink aisle before. I like Ken, and my daughter's like the brats. With the cart full, Shaq loaded up his arms with his favorite board games. 
And by the time his trip was over, Shaq gave the tots a truckload of toys, but says you don't have to be seven feet tall to make a big impact. He's asking us all to donate just one. Joy Benedict, News Channel 5. He's known on the court for his defense and consistency, but if you look closely, you'll see Joe Smith also keeps a little rhythm in his step. This is me right here. This Cavs forward moonlights as a musician. It's just been that way my entire life, ever since I had a little walk, man. You know. <laughs> Joe sat down with us at the House of Blues to show us the method behind the music. Write about basketball, write about music, I mean, love, my love for music. In fact, he loves the lyrics so much, he now owns his own in-home recording studio, a label, and he just right. made his debut CD. The Beginning, <laughs> Joe Beast, Noble Unit. But this self-titled Beast <laughs> is actually kind of shy, which is why his written words are so important. Whenever I just feel like I need to express something, I just, you know, throw the music on and get the writing. My form of kind of getting it out. I usually don't talk too much. I was raised in the east, but embraced by the west. California, great place to kick it, hit Virginia to rest. This track is called Virginia to California. It started out in Virginia, uh, got drafted in California. And although most of his lyrics are laid back, he does put his heart on display at times. My mom passed away a couple years ago, and I mean, talk about her a little bit. Last night I had a dream, dream, and my mama was in it, but everything felt so People always, you know, look at us on another level and think we're not human. So he makes it clear in this song that he feels too. So much so that you'll rarely find him without one of his spiral notebooks just writing stuff down. Brian, he thought last year when I was just doing all the writing on the plane, he told me he's like, he just thought I was writing. Until Joe gave all his teammates a copy of his CD. They listen to it. They listen to it and uh, actually I get good reviews from it. But who couldn't take to this gentle giant? So the next time you see him on the court, know there's some soul behind that sunny smile. It's not just about music or basketball. It's about life as well. A rhythm this player shows in every rebound on and off the court. One now echoed in music. Joe's album, The Beginning, is not for sale right now. It is just a hobby. However, we have both songs that he discussed on our website at newsnet5.com. You can go there and take a listen. On the Thanks. court, it's wine and gold, homemade signs, and points in the paint. But this team's artistic hues don't end at the buzzer. Many on the Cavs team wear their creativity permanently. To me, is this basically just a way to express yourself? Cavs guard Tarns Kinsey sports more than 80 tattoos and helped walk us through his canvas. There's a devil right here at the bottom pulling this guy by the hair, pull him down into the fire. His sleeves are permanent. Images of devils and angels and scripture he calls a reminder. It's basically your, every, your everyday struggle, you know, You're trying to go do the right thing, but someone always trying to pull you down. His stomach tells the story of David and Goliath and family pride, and his back bears portraits of his sister, mother, and grandmother. These are the three women that's always praying for me. But DK isn't alone. Delante West wears phrases like survival and gone forever. Joe Smith sports his record label on his shoulder. Then I have Beast over here. And Mo Williams flaunts Fido and phrases too. One of my um, um it says, um, I would never follow. I would never follow what the path may lead, but I would go where there's no path and leave my own. But with so much ink, you'd think tattoos were this team's favorite pastime. So why do these guys spend hours under the needle? It's like a woman with shoes. You know, I think that's the best way I probably could put it. But you'd think this hurts more than a new pair of heels. I pretty much go to sleep during my tattoos. I don't know how I do it, but I go to sleep. And even though LeBron's arms get more ink with every milestone and his back bears the slogan signifying his status, even the chosen one's ink gets made fun of. Andy's chosen two tattoo washed off. And Coach Brown isn't participating in the ink fest either. Never. <laughs> N-E-V-E-R. Never. Not even if? When this team gets matching rings? You think Mike Brown will answer that question? There's not a shot. One day, one practice, one shoot around at a time. You heard it. Straight from Tom's mouth. <laughs> but TK hasn't ruled out his first sports inscription, and his fellow tatted teammates wouldn't mind more ink either. And although they probably don't need an excuse, a championship sure would be worth remembering. Joy Benedict, News Channel 5.